Welcome everyone to the uh, S1 St Ninian's Maths Department Workshop. Uh, this is part one. Uh, we're going to do a couple of these. This is instead of the workshop that we would have in classes uh, with, with teachers in front of you, obviously, uh, due to COVID restrictions. Um, so what I'm going to try and do here is give you an idea of a couple of the topics that we're, we're about to teach um, and then part different parts, maybe later on, we'll hopefully cover uh, topics maybe that have already been taught or maybe even other topics we're going to teach in the future. Uh, it's a little less interactive than we would like, obviously, um, with the way things are. Um, it's not going to be as easy for you to ask us questions, but hopefully you'll get something from this. Um, it's just to really identify any issues or any differences that perhaps exist from when um, uh, you were taught things at school compared to the way we things we teach things now uh, in class to the young people. Um, so without further ado, let's crack on. Um, so every single day when the pupils come into class, uh, they'll be faced with a period starter. Um, they'll be used to this in primary school. Um, we try to keep things as consistent as possible. Um, and most days, I, I, would, I would expect pupils to be able to do the period starter reasonably easily. It's, it's more than likely going to be a recap of the previous day's work, maybe sometimes a little bit of a lead in to the, to the lesson for that day. Um, so what, what, what I was thinking we could do here is if you've got a pen and a bit of paper, you can pause the video, go and find a pen and a bit of paper if you need to, uh, but you can pause the video uh, and have a go at the questions and then match up your working and see if it looks like what we would expect. I would think for these four it will look very similar. Nothing really majorly has changed with these ones. So pause the video and we can go through them. Okay, so just question one to start off, uh, simple addition. So 123 plus 149, we'd be looking for things laid uh, sort of vertically with your addition symbol at the left hand side. 9 and 3 is 12, you would carry your 1 over there from the 10s. 4 and 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7, and then 1 and 1 is obviously 2, so 272. Similarly with the subtraction, um, so 453, subtract 164. This time round we've got this kind of issue where you can't do the subtraction, and all of this stuff would have been covered at primary school. There's, there's nothing really here that, that is, is very different at all. Um, 14 subtract 6 is 8. And 3 subtract 1 is 2. I, I'm trying my best to say the word subtract. We don't try not to use the word take away um, or, or minus. Minus would tend to be used in temperature. A take away is just something you have on a, on a, on a Saturday night from the different food places. So um, that would be your second one. Number 3. Uh, question 3. Multiplication. 26 multiplied by 8. The 8 times tables for some reason is one that really does give some issues sometimes. So 6 8s are 48. And then 8 times 2, or you can do 2 times 8, depending on which way you want to work it through from your stations on the multiplication uh, tables. 2 8 so 16 plus the 4 uh, is 20, so 208. And then the last one here, your division, uh, again, similar to what you would have hopefully seen at primary school, uh, dividing by 4, 324. Obviously, 4 doesn't divide into 3, so you'd put a 0 there and carry the 3 on, and then 8, and then 1 for 81. OK, so very simple um, starter for that one, but it just gives you an idea of what we'd expect to see from the layout. Pause it every time. You can take your time doing them. You can talk to your son or daughter about their method and, and just get, get a feel for what they do on a daily basis. OK, um, the common language methodology, just a wee quick um, slide on this where it's all on our website. So what you can do is you can uh, go to the about us section. Uh, and then in here with common language and methodology, in here there are there are three different types. I'm going to be going through the uh, the algebra stuff here of how we solve equations uh, today, so you might want to access that one. But there's other ones in there for numeracy and information handling, and you can you can have a read of those at your own leisure. It should match up really quite closely with um, in the cluster of primary schools, but also just what's in the notes jotter uh, when they come to do these topics. OK, so equations. Equations is one of the kind of different ones that we do because there are about three or four different ways of doing an equation or solving an equation. Um, and we as an do it in a specific way. And it would be really helpful for us if at home um, you are aware of the methods we use so that if you're looking in the notes jotter or in the homework jotter or the class jotter, you might be able to maybe either help out with marking or if they get stuck, uh, obviously, um, give them a wee hand. So. Normally, we would have a wee discussion about how you guys would have solved this when you were at school. There are lots of different methods. So if you want to have a wee look at that, pause the video again, and then, and then we're going to move on to the next slide and see the different ways of doing it. OK, so different ways of doing this. Um, there, are, there are lots of different ways. OK, I think um, 
these these methods here, I don't know what they're called officially, some of them, but for me personally, that looks a little bit complicated, looks a little bit difficult with all these extra bits being added in here and extra bits added in here. Uh, it makes mathematical sense uh, and I can follow it through and there's nothing wrong necessarily with doing it, but it, it just looks a little bit overcomplicated for us. Again, here we've simplified it slightly. We're just putting kind of instructions down the right hand side and that's probably the closest one to what, what the way we do it. Uh, this is another one method I've seen at some schools where they, you put the instructions kind of here and here on either side. But these aren't the ones we're looking for. The one we're looking to use is, is we use something called a method line. Uh, and I'm sure if you're watching this with any of your, any of your uh, the, young, the young people, they'll hopefully be nodding along from primary school um, because they will have seen this before. The method line uh, here I've highlighted for you. Um, and, and it's very similar to this one here where the instructions go on the right hand side here and here. Okay, so that's the sort of layout that we've been expecting to do here. We'll go through the, the, the process or the idea behind what, what you do and how you decide what the method's going to be uh, in, on the next slide. Um, so we just want, yeah, want to take a standardised approach just to make sure that everything's the same for all pupils. If they move classes at any point or if they've got their class covered by a teacher or anything or if they come to support a study, the homework club, anything like that, then it's dead easy for them to, to get help and everybody's sort of reading off the same uh, hidden sheet. Okay, so some of the, the, the words and the ways that we'd be talking about things, when we first introduce equations, um, which will have been done at primary school, I, I, I'm sure of this at, at most levels, we, we, we start initially with a, 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 a scales to balance the equation. Um, so you've got like a wee bag of money here on the left hand side and you've got some coins. I keep pointing at the screen, but you guys obviously can't see me. So we've got a bag of money here on the left hand side and four coins. Um, and then on the right hand side, we've got six coins. Now, obviously, these scales at the minute are completely balanced, hence why the, the wee triangle there is supposed to be showing it horizontally. Um, but if we want to try and solve that, we ultimately what we want to do is we want to try and get rid of, we want to try and get rid of the, uh, the, the extra coins that are on the right hand side and the left hand side here and try and, uh, and keep the scales the same horizontal balance. So the, the idea is that basically whatever you do to this side here, so whatever you get rid of these ones, you must do the same idea to the right hand side. Okay, so if we want to get rid of these four coins, our method would be to subtract four, and you've got to do the same to both sides. So we could be getting of one, two, three, four, and that obviously leaves you with two coins, one here and one here. So you'd, have, you'd ultimately have your answer of x equals two. Okay. Um, obviously, when we're doing these questions, we don't use this. Okay. This is just a concept to introduce it. So, have a go. Okay. Same idea, but without the scales, without the picture of the scales. So, have a go at this. Uh, pause the video, and uh, we'll come back in a wee second. Okay. So, in here, again, similar to the previous slide, where I'd be identifying this bit here as the the kind of issue or the thing that we want to get rid of, what's the opposite of add three. And that's why over here we have our subtract three. To get rid of it, you need to do the opposite of what the thing is. Um, at the very, very beginning, we would maybe be saying things like um, subtract three from both sides. Okay, maybe eventually be shortened to FBS and then eventually disappear altogether once the, the, the procedure and the process has been uh, so sort of repeated enough, and then you, I, I tend to write my answer here with a wee gap underneath that. I like to see the, the fact that the, I like to see the fact that this has disappeared. So I like to have a nice wee space there. Um, and when you're doing it to both sides, obviously you need to then do five subtract three, which gives me an answer of two. In here with the next one, again it's the opposite of whatever this is. The currently this is subtract two, so we're going to add two, and this time of course would be two, both sides. Okay, or TBS if you're shorting it, and then eventually you wouldn't bother writing that at all. Um, so we're going to have K equals 8, and again, a nice gap there to show that the negative 2 has disappeared, um, and, and you've got your answer. I underline my answers because I think it looks nice, but it's not necessary. Okay, again, have a go at these ones, pause the video, have a think, have a talk, have a discuss um, with, with yourselves or, or with your son or daughter at home, and we'll go through them just now. Okay, again, we've got, um, in maths, when you've squashed these two things together, so the 3 and the P are beside each other, so we've got 3P is the same as 3 times P, 
So we're saying to ourselves here, right, if you're multiplying the p by 3, what's the opposite of multiplying by 3? And over here you would have divide by 3. Uh, again, you'd have your answer where you do 9 divided by 3, which gives you 3 as the answer. In here, same idea, divide by 7, g equals 3. And the beautiful thing about equations is, and the thing that I always quite liked when I was at school is, when you get your answer at the end, let's say here we think uh, g is 3, you can then always check it by putting it back into the question. What is 7 times 3? 7 times 3 is 21, so that is correct. Moving on a little bit more, this is like the one we had at the, um, at the very beginning, but moving on a little bit more um, to ones like these, and it just kind of builds up and builds up. But what we're ultimately always trying to do is at the end of each question, end up with x equals or w equals, but you're undoing all of the things that are involved in the question. So here we've got two bits. We've got a plus one and we've got a we've got a, a times by two. Um, we need to get rid of both of those parts to ultimately at the end end up with x equals something. Now, when you're doing this, um, if you remember, if you, if you have uh, the discussion uh, about bod mass, okay, um, brackets of division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, in reverse, so normally you would work this way, in reverse, Okay, we would do the adding and subtracting, because remember we're undoing everything. So adding and subtracting will be undone first, then multiplying and dividing, and then these two here at the top, uh, don't really, we don't really need those as much at the minute. It's, it's more subtracting and adding first, then any multiplying and dividing comes after that. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to undo the, the add one first of all, so that'll be subtract one. 2x equals, again, I like to leave a nice wee gap. I like to leave a nice wee gap here to show that it's disappeared. Um, 9 subtract 1 is 8, and then it's like one of the ones we did on the previous slide, so we're dividing by 2, and x equals 4, underline your answer. Okay, same idea down here, plus 2, 5w equals 10, and then divide by 5, <coughs> w equals 2. Okay, next slide along, <coughs> slightly the more difficult equations, what you'll notice here is, you've got x's on both sides of the equation. Okay, and this is stuff that we'll be doing this this year. Okay, um, some of this will lead into things we'll be doing in second year. Um, but you've now got x on both sides of the equation. And the question that we tend to try and get into the pupils' heads are, or is something like uh, which side has the smaller x? Okay, and then we can deal with that side, and that will hopefully keep everything positive and keep everything nice and easy. If you deal with negative x's uh, and you get your answer as a negative x, it's not really ideal at all. So you've got two, two x's on the left and one x on the right. So it's these ones we're going to deal with first of all. Okay, so how do I deal with uh, this x being on its own? You just subtract it. If you subtract that x, it'll get rid of it. So 2x minus 1x is 1x, and it's okay to put a zero on the right hand side. Zero is still a, a number, it's still a, a potential answer even, and it's still something we, we need to include. And then we're just going to add the 6, so we get x equals 6. And again, I, I try to leave my gaps where the things have disappeared from. Also, uh, I really try, I haven't done it quite perfectly here, but really try to keep my, um, e my equals all in line with each other. Uh, same again here, we've got a 5w and a 3w, so it's these ones here. Okay, we're looking to try and get rid of because they're the smaller number of w's. Um, so we will just subtract the 3w and 5w subtract 6 equals 0. And this now looks like one of the ones we had on the previous slide. So plus 6, 2w equals 6, divide by 2, w equals 3. And again, we underline it then to finish it off. Okay. Building up to one of the ones that are probably the most difficult ones you'll, the young people will see this year um, before we go into <clears throat> ones that might bridge the gap between first and second year. Again, um, we've got x's on both sides. We've got x's here and we've got x's here. But then we've also got a couple of numbers. But the idea, uh, certainly, that most uh, most of the time we look to do is we look to deal with the letters first, like written up here. Okay, so you've got your 2x and your 1x. Which one's smaller? Obviously, the 1x is smaller, so we're looking to deal with this one first of all, so we'll subtract it. 2x here, subtract 1x is 1x. 
and then you, I, I tend to leave the plus 10 in. I tend to leave that plus in because in certain situations, if that's a negative, right, if this is a negative here, then it's, it is going to be very important that it's left in the question. So I tend initially to just leave the plus in there just to make sure that we, we know what the symbol is. Um, and then just subtract the 5, uh, x equals 10 minus 5 is obviously 5. Okay, same idea here. Um, please, you know, I'm not saying pause the video, but you can pause the video whenever you want, obviously, uh, to have a go at these and rewind it. You can rewatch it and so on and so forth. Um, so again, we've got 4b and we've got a 2b. These are the ones we're going to deal with because they're the smaller number. Uh, so subtract 2b, uh, two, 4b subtract 2b is 2b. Subtract 1 equals 9. Again, probably just leave that plus in just to be sure in case in certain situations it's a negative. Add the 1. This is not like the one we did on a couple of slides ago. 2b equals 10. Divide by 2b equals 5. And there's your answer to that one. Uh, negative letters do come in a little bit this year, but really ultimately we're uh, probably going to be using them a little bit more in second year. But just as an introduction, for ones like this, it's very easy to say to yourself, okay, 10 subtract what gives you 2? And you're probably going to be able to tell me the answer is 8. However, building up to harder questions, ones like this, for example, 8 subtract 2 times what gives you 2? That's a lot more difficult. So we want to establish some sort of method that works for all negative letters. And the basic idea is we don't want the letter to be negative. So if it's currently a minus x on this side, if we add x to both sides, we'll be able to get rid of it being negative. It'll become positive on the other side and we'll be able to solve it more easily. So 2 plus x and then the opposite of add 2 is just subtract 2. So we'll get x equals 8. Now, there's nothing wrong really with having the x on the right hand side, but some people aren't comfortable with that. So you can just rewrite it like that at the end as x equals 8. Similarly here, uh, I don't want the negative 2t. So I'll go with uh, add 2t. And that gives me 8 equals 2 plus 2t. Subtract the 2. 6 equals 2t. Divide by 2t equals 3. Or, of course, you can just rewrite it as t equals 3, like so. A little bit more difficult, but the most important thing is getting this first step from the minus 2t added to the other side so it becomes positive. And then it's basically just the same as before. Okay, uh, much, much more difficult, but again, just to show, I think this is probably really either extension for certain classes or, or properly into um, second year work. Uh, again, we're looking to ask ourselves which side has got the smaller number of x's. You've got negative 2 or positive 3. Hopefully, um, we would be okay identifying the fact that the negative 2 is the, is the smaller number. So we're going to add those 2x there, the negative 2x. Add the 2x to both sides. 10 equals 5x minus 5. Add the 5. This is again like one of the ones from the... It's all about trying to just get it back down to what we had at the beginning. Uh, and x equals 3 or x equals 3 like that. Okay. Over here, this one's really tricky because we've got negative 3x and negative 2x. Now, most of the time, you should just look at the numbers 2 and 3, you'd say 2 is smaller. But actually here, negative 3 is smaller than negative 2. Okay, so here we're looking to deal with these ones first of all. So add the 3x to both sides. 14, negative 2x plus 3x is positive 1x minus 5. And then just add the 5, x equals 19, or you can write x equals 19 if you prefer. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to build build on this in a second part. I'm only going to record this in a single part, mainly for upload purposes. Also, I'm a bit worried about the timer stopping and then me having to record it all again. Um, so we're just a hair under 20 minutes. Um, I hope it's not been too fast. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you were able to follow it reasonably um, easily. Uh, I'm not suggesting it would have been uh, easy for everybody because it depends on how you, how long ago you perhaps learned this at school and just how confident and comfortable you are with, with different areas of maths. Um, we're going to record a second one on percentages. We're maybe even going to record um, other ones on, on different topics as we progress throughout the course, because I think usually uh, parents find this quite useful. Hopefully you find this format of it useful. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm really sorry that we can't actually do it uh, with you in the room, uh, because that would be uh, that would be a lot kind of better to interact. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this. My, my name is Mr. Eaglesham. Um, and I hope we'll speak to you all next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.